Hello Muggles and welcome back to my Harry Potter kitchen, the YouTube series where I am baking my way through the Harry Potter books, making recipes for all the magical food and drink featured inside. If you missed last week's recipe as part of our Hogwarts Great Hall Feast, where we made these Hogwarts House Lightning Bolt Block Ice Cream, then check out the link down below in the description to catch up. But it is Magic Monday, so let's see what's waiting for us today. Ready for some more dessert? Well, if like me, you're a fan of Harry Potter and you don't want to miss a thing from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get alerts every Magic Monday when there is a brand new video. The ice cream has just about settled, so let's get back to the feast. Okay, so you know how this works. We don't have to go very far for our next recipe. A moment later, the puddings appeared. Blocks of ice cream in every flavor you could think of, apple pies. Looks like, it's pie time. For this recipe, we're going to make puff pastry with 250 grams of plain flour, a pinch of salt, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, 125 milliliters of water, and 175 grams of butter. For our filling, we're going to need 25 grams of butter, 75 grams of golden caster sugar, three cooking apples, one teaspoon of cinnamon, and three tablespoons of water. We're then going to thicken up the sauce with a tablespoon of corn flour and two tablespoons of water. You'll also need some oil for frying. Now I do love an apple pie and I've had quite a few in my time. Traditionally they are made with a sweet short crust pastry with a super sweet and fruity filling, but I thought we'd do something a little bit different and make it with puff pastry, kind of in the style that you might be used to from McDonald's. But of course it's my Harry Potter kitchen so we're going to make ours a little bit different. Now you might be used to just buying your puff pastry from the shop, but if you've got time, this is how you can make your own at home. First you need to combine your dry ingredients, that's our flour, salt and cinnamon, in a bowl and mix it through. Make a well in the middle and then pour in your water, working it together until it forms the soft dough. Bring this together until it's nice and smooth and then wrap your dough in cling film and pop it into the fridge to chill for at least half an hour. While this is chilling, you also want to prepare your butter, which should be at room temperature. You want to place the butter in between two pieces of greaseproof paper and then roll it down into a rectangle. Now you might be wondering, what in the name of Dumbledore am I rolling out butter for? Well, there is some method to the madness. This is so we can create layers of butter and pastry for our puff pastry. By folding, rolling, folding and rolling, we're gonna create distinct layers of pastry and butter. And what's gonna happen is that when we go to cook this, the butter is gonna melt, puff up our pastry and create those distinct flaky layers. Once the pastry is nice and chilled, remove it from the fridge and then flour your surface. We're gonna roll this out until it's about half a centimeter thick and you want it to be about twice as wide as our butter. You can then remove the butter from the greaseproof paper and then place it into the middle. Cut the corners of the pastry and then fold it over to secure the butter in place. You want to pinch down the edges to make sure that the butter won't escape. We're then going to start the rolling process, trying to keep it into a uniform rectangle. Roll upwards until you get it back down to about half a centimetre thick. We're then going to fold the bottom third towards the middle and then the top third over that. You want to brush off any excess flour in between just to help it stick. After your first fold, rotate the pastry 90 degrees and then continue rolling it. Because we want to keep the butter nice and cool so it doesn't start to melt, after your third roll, wrap it back in the cling film and pop it into the fridge to chill again for about 10 to 15 minutes. Then once it's firmed up a little bit, you can continue rolling and folding to get your final three turns. 
So there you go, it takes a bit of time to master puff pastry and the technique of lamination, which is where you layer it with butter and pastry, but it is definitely a technique worth learning. And once you've mastered it, you can use it for tons of things, lots of French pastry like croissants, pan au chocolat, the list is endless. While the pastry is chilling, we're gonna move on to making our filling. First things first, we need to peel our apples and remove the skin. Pop them into a bowl of cold water just to stop them from going brown. The easiest way to cube them is to cut around the core, slice them in half, slice them one way and then slice them back the other way. You want to make sure your cubes are big enough so that we get some bite in our apple pie and not too small otherwise it will turn to mush. Once all your apples are chopped you can head on over to the stove which we're going to pop onto a medium heat. Add in your butter and sugar and allow it to melt into a caramel. Once it's all melted, you can add in your cubed apples along with your cinnamon and water. Stir that through so all your apple pieces are nicely coated and then pop the lid on top, allowing it to simmer for five minutes. While it's bubbling away, you can make a quick slurry out of corn flour and water and we're going to use this to thicken up our apple sauce. Once the apples are al dente, pour in your corn flour mixture and then stir that through and you'll notice that the sauce starts to thicken up. After two minutes, it should be nice and thick so you can remove it from the heat and allow it to cool. Now, of course, apple pies are usually served round or in McDonald's, they are rectangle, but it's my Harry Potter kitchen and we love a good lightning bolt. So that is what we're gonna turn our apple pies into. First, we're gonna cut out a stencil, then we're gonna cut out the shapes from our pastry and fill them with our fresh apple sauce. Cut out your stencil with cardboard as it's easier to reuse and then take your pastry out to the fridge. We're gonna roll this back down so it's about half a centimeter thick. And unlike other pastries where you can use your scraps, we really need to get as much out of this on the first roll. Otherwise, we'll mess up our layers. Roll it into a very, very long rectangle and then start cutting at one end. Cut around your stencil and then try to keep them as close as possible so we get as many lightning bolts out of our single roll of pastry. Once all your shapes are cut, it's time to start assembling your apple pies. Place the first layer of our puff pastry down on a baking tray and then a quick trick to make sure you get a nice line of our filling is to pop it into a piping bag. Pipe your filling along the centre of your pastries and be careful not to add too much otherwise they might burst. Once you've added them all in, all you need to do is create an egg wash by beating an egg together. We're then going to use this as the glue to stick our pastry over the top and then work your way around to seal the edges. First do this by hand just to squash them down and then you can use a fork to reinforce the seal. Pop these back into the fridge to chill until you're ready to fry them. When they're ready to fry, all you need to do is heat some oil. I've gone for sunflower oil on a medium heat until it is nice and hot. You can always add in some scraps of your puff pastry to test that it's hot enough. When it's good to go, pop in your apple pies one or two at a time, being careful not to overcrowd the pan. They'll take about two to three minutes to go golden brown, so then you can flip them over and allow them to cook on the other side. Once they're lovely and golden, remove them from the pan and drain off any excess oil. And we're pretty much there. All that's left to do is dust them with icing sugar just before we serve. So there you go, a nice magical twist on the classic apple pie. If you like this recipe and you want to see more from my Harry Potter kitchen, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell so you get an alert every magic Monday when there is a brand new video. That's all for this week, but I will see you next time.